In today's video, we're going to be comparing the OnSpot Tiny 2 to the Insta360 Lite, both of which are small little webcams that you can take and put on top of your desktop or your laptop or your gaming setup, instead of just having a static webcam or something that's maybe typical of like a 1080 webcam that's built in. So I thought for today's video, it'd be best to actually record this on what you'd be using this with, which is this is footage straight coming from the OnSpot Mini in a very rainy day and in a diff different setup. There is no overhead lights, there's nothing crazy going on here. It's not anything professional. This is what you would see. So throughout the video, I'm gonna switch between the Insta360 Link or OBSBOT Tiny 2, and you can kind of take a look at and compare them and see which one you prefer. So both of these cameras feature tracking, which means that you can go through and use hand gestures to kind of track and basically move around your room and have the camera follow you. Now this is actually really helpful if maybe you're doing something in a stream where you're maybe unboxing things or you're moving around or you want something that's a little bit more dynamic to so say you want to live stream maybe like a yo-yo session or something you can go through and move around according in your room and have the camera follow you without having to have either someone behind the camera or um, have multiple cameras around the room. This basically alleviates that by allowing this whole camera system to kind of move around. So in my tracking, I actually found that the OnSpot Tiny 2 was a little bit more responsive in terms of responding to the hand gestures. So when I would put up some hand gestures and such, it would basically respond to them more quicker than I saw on the Insta360 Link. Now, keep in mind that it's also partially due to a larger sensor size, better light. Um, and also, I found that I prefer the OzBot Tiny 2 in terms of its tracking, um, where I felt that the Insta360 Link was often a little bit more jittery. Um, the OzBot Tiny 2 was a lot more smooth and clean, um, and also did a better job, of course, responding to the hand signals when I put them up. I've noticed that in low light, the Insta360 kind of is slow to respond to some hand gestures, and I noticed that there was a major step up in terms of the OzBot Tiny 2. Now, that also leads me into the video quality section. So as you can tell just by maybe the first little bit of this video, you can kind of tell the difference between the Insta360 Link and the OzBot Tiny 2. Um, you'll notice that the OzBot Tiny 2, in my opinion, does a better job kind of picking up details, especially when you have a much larger camera sensor, you're going to notice better details, especially when you're talking about 4K. I actually personally think that the camera quality that comes out of this, the while well, yes, there is some issues with maybe some saturation, um, and there is somewhat of a false color that comes out of this. I'm a little bit more washed out than I am. I think the Insta360 Link does a better job of color accuracy. Um, I, it's not really something, that is something you can end up fixing with the built-in software to tune that to your liking. But I find the actual image quality, the details um, are actually much more accurate because the resolution is one thing, but having the sensor size to back that up is another, and that obviously results in better image quality. Now, both of these cameras feature a desk mode, which allows you to basically kind of showcase your desk, and then it also does some image warping, to kind of flatten it out. Now, this doesn't really basically make it the same as an overhead, but it does offer a, let's say, a cheap alternative to having an overhead camera. Um, I also found that the, especially for the OzBot 92, the desk image quality, especially in the desk mode, was a lot better. When you have a lot less details and limited light coming into the sensor, the Insta360 Link is going to suffer a little bit from that, um, whereas the Oswald Tiny 2 I found maybe by just having more light coming into the sensor, more crisp details, um, the desk mode tended to look better. Now obviously I'm not a fan of this and this isn't something that I'd probably use if I really need to be important because obviously there are certain aspects that are basically hidden. I've already touched on this a little bit, but the low light image quality coming out of this, um, just basically in comparison, I want to say the Oswald Tiny 2 is maybe about 20 to 30% better than the Insta360 Link. And that is basically just from my testing, going around testing it and basically kind of this, I want to say gloomy, overcast kind of setting to pitch dark at night to maybe wide in the middle of the day. Uh, I definitely noticed that the Oswald Tiny 2 just does a flat out better job capturing these details. The low light video coming out of this is just much better. Um, obviously, since these are still rather small sensors, you're not going to get phenomenal uh, video coming out of them at pitch dark. You're going to get some noise, you're going to get stuff like that. That's at least a, there is at least a step up, and especially if you have one of the more overcast or darker setups, and maybe you're streaming doing that, um, it's something to definitely consider. Now, microphone quality is probably not something that you're going to be too concerned about, especially if you're buying a $300 webcam. You might want to consider getting a microphone first. But the Oswald Tiny 2 has an improvement where it has stereo audio versus the Insta360 Link's mono audio. Both cameras feature audio noise suppression, 
which I'm going to play some clips of me testing each of them out right now. This is the Osmot Tiny 2, um, mainly on the left side and mainly on the right side. This is the Insta360 Link. This is what this sounds like. Now one of the more unadvertised features that I actually like about the Insta360 Link is the ability for it to stabilize video. While the Insta360 Link is a fully functional 3-axis gimbal, the Oddspot Tiny 2 is a PTZ web camera as in you can move it multiple axes, but you cannot actually stabilize video, which means that the stuff that comes out of the Insta360 Link is substantially better when it's moving. Um, so you get very nice stabilized video compared to the Osbot Tiny 2, which when you move it around, you're basically holding around a camera with no inbuilt stabilization. And the video that just comes out of that can be very shaky at times. Now, obviously for a webcam, you're not too concerned about moving this around a whole lot. Um, but a lot of times I've found that the Insta360 Link is something really cool to stick on to maybe the top of a phone or maybe the hood of a car or something like that that you can actually then get some video without having to have this complicated camera system versus the Oswald Tiny 2 which is something that really has to be only a webcam and has to be static which as I said if you're getting this just for a webcam completely irrelevant the image quality on this is much better which is something to keep in mind there. Next up is the focusing. Each of these cameras promise an uh, impressive focusing ability where they can basically respond to things put in front of them. Um, so then they can respond, focus, and then um, adjust accordingly. Um, compared to each other, I would say the focusing is, I want to say, very similar. I want to say maybe the Oswald Tiny 2 is slightly better in that regard. Um, but I also noticed that the Oswald Tiny 2 does a lot more focusing on faces. So the moment that something then the face becomes obscure, it then focuses. And even then, sometimes if you don't cover the face all the way, it doesn't focus on what you're looking for. So as you can see, it takes a lot of work to get this to focus. And then the moment any part of the face is in view, it then becomes kind of obscured and it starts focusing on the face. Even if you have an object kind of in focus here, then it takes a bit to focus. So I want to say maybe the algorithm is a little slightly different than what I'd prefer, but I do notice that the focusing is a lot more faster on the Oswald Tiny 2, maybe by like 10 to 20%. Now one thing that the Oswald Tiny 2 has that the Insta360 does not is the ability to track based on your hand. The Insta360 Link, as you can see here, can track me based off my face, but it cannot move based off my hand. So then if I basically put my hand up, I'm going to get both cameras tracking me. But if you put your hand up with the Oswald Tiny 2, you can then get hand movement tracking versus the Insta360 Link, which only tracks based off your face, which I actually prefer the hand tracking because it allows you to kind of move the camera around with your hand, whereas you have to, for the Institute of Link, put your hand up, have it track your face, and then move your face where you want it to go, which is kind of more inconvenient. So I actually personally prefer the, at least that feature of the tracking on the Osbot Tiny 2. Now another thing that the Insta360 Link does have that the Osbot Tiny 2 does not is the ability for vertical shooting modes. By having a fully functional 3-axis gimbal, you get stabilized vertical video that then you can use going forward, which is actually better sometimes in some situations for maybe streaming to TikTok or one of the vertical uh, video platforms, or you want to use that as more of a webcam and you don't need all this added area on the sides, you can go through and record a vertical slice and get maybe your whole body, uh, maybe your head, your chest, and some of that as well. So you're not so worried about you know this huge wide screen as you would with a typical what is it, 9, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the desktop software, the differences between the Osbot 92 and the Insta360 Link when it comes to the software that you're provided. Uh, simply put, the Insta360 does a good job with providing you, I want to say, with everything that you need for basic use, basic function, um, kind of addressing all the basic features. And the Osbot Tiny 2 goes a little bit above and beyond and adds a bunch of uh, AI features. So one of the main ones, of course, being like the beauty functions. Then you have, of course, the like, they have like this whole body sculpting suite so you can like do Photoshop like real time. Um, in my experience, it ended up being extremely laggy and therefore not really usable. Uh, but I thought that at least it was maybe with some graphical acceleration and stuff, you could actually get some usable, uh, you know, some usable footage out of this. Now keep in mind, I'm running this on a pretty powerful laptop um, and this is not by any means like bad hardware. Uh, so you're basically looking at something that really does struggle if you want to use these, you know, AI face detection features at 4K. You're gonna have to bump it down to um, 1080p or something lower 
then again, at least it gives you the option to do so. When it comes to the construction of each of these gimbals, the Osbot Tiny 2 is made of mostly metal, um, at least with the gimbal housing being metal, and then a plastic base. Whereas the Insta360 Link is entirely plastic, and then of course has no real metal components in it. Overall, you're not really going to be holding this, you're not really going to be filling this, um, but the plastic on the Insta360 Link and the Osbot Tiny 2 both feel high quality, just the Osbot Tiny 2 has, of course, that metal case. So currently, the Osbot Tiny 2 does not have the ability for you to enable HDR, whereas the Insta360 Link has that ability, but it only knocks you down to 1080p, and I believe it also gets rid of the 60fps option. So basically, you're very limited if you want HDR, so you have to lose a huge chunk of the resolution um, in order to just get that HDR access. The Osbot Tiny 2 also does come with a remote. I wasn't able to have that for this review, um, but you can definitely take a look at that and that I'm assuming allows you to at least have some basic control like you would with any other PTZ camera and allow you to kind of move it around without having to actually have to be hooked up on some type of desktop software, which I think is great if you want to take it on the go, similar to what I'd recommend for the Insta360 Link. Both of these cameras feature a AI zoom feature, um, however, I actually end up preferring the one on the Osbot Tiny 2 slightly more than I prefer the Insta360 Link. Um, the best way to kind of summarize this whole review basically is that the Osbot Tiny 2 does a little bit better in the software, whereas the Insta360 Link does a little bit better on the hardware. So the Osbot Tiny 2 comes in at a price of $330, whereas the Insta360 Link comes in at a price of $300, which in my opinion, they are roughly equivalent um, I actually personally would say that $30 is not that big of a deal, if you, especially if you're looking for superior image quality. However, um, I also think the Insta360 Link is a very compelling option if you're actually going through and wanting to do some type of movement or take this on the go. It is a much more compelling option that way. Honestly, I think they probably should be priced almost identical, um, but that's just because they have each varying different trade-offs. So let's also talk about the voice control, which is something also very exclusive to the Osbot Tiny 2. So I can go through and ask something like, zoom in closer. Zoom in closer. And then as you can see, it will zoom into my face. Obviously it will lose some of the resolution and depth. And I can also say, zoom out farther. Zoom out farther. As you can tell, if I'm talking in a sentence, it's not going to detect it, um, but if I kind of pause and then I'll go through and say something, then it will, which in my opinion is actually better because then it avoids you, you know, in a game or something saying that and then it doing that. Um, it's a lot more, I would say, realistic is that yes, that may be annoying a little bit, but it'd also be very annoying to have it happen when you're in a game and you're saying, you know, track me or something like that. And now it actually picks that up in the middle of my sentence. So I'm just curious if I say, you know, unlock me, then, uh, you know, that doesn't do it unlock me unlock me and then now that does that so as you can tell it's a little finicky if you're talking and you're doing a youtube video but i'm sure if you were just you know taking a pause and saying it then i'm sure it would work just fine so in conclusion i've left the colors basically stock on each of these cameras um, you can kind of judge what you like the default color accuracy um, but in my opinion i find the osbot tiny 2 is a better webcam in terms of something that you would use in a static situation for a streaming setup versus the Insta360 Link is something that you may be taking a little bit on, you know, moving a little bit with, maybe setting it up. Um, I do really wish the, both these cameras had some type of external recorder so you could use them as little cameras and adjust them versus just using the static and slash stock, um, you know, desktop. I really wish you had some ability to access them via a little controller or something and take them on the go because that would make the Insta360 Link a much better camera. But overall, these are ultimately both webcams and both, both ultimately do need a computer that you would have to take with you. And in that case, I still think the Osbot Tiny 2, um, while yes, it lacks its gimbal stabilization vertical shooting, is a better static webcam. Now, if you're ever thinking about using the camera for movement shots, or you're putting it in weird situations and taking it in a moving situation, maybe you're recording inside of a car, or you're going through and you're recording from the front of, you know, recording in a weird spot, or maybe hooking it up to something that's going to be moving a lot, and not a static state of situation like the top of the monitor, then that's also something to consider with the Insta360 Link, and that's definitely where it shines. So in conclusion, thank you very much for watching. So consider subscribing if you are not already, and I hope to see you around another YouTube review, and uh, goodbye.